martial art lovers, and welcome to Playdates. My name is Jose Garza, museum educator at the Contemporary Art Museum, St. Louis. Today, our theme will be fantastic forms. We'll learn how artists use form to create fantastic works of art. We'll also visit some artwork in the museum, and we have a special segment from our friends, Dances of India. So happy that you're able to join us. Fantastic forms. Form. F O R M. What is form? A form is a three dimensional shape expressing length, width, and depth. Balls, cylinders, boxes, and pyramids are forms. Form is an element of art. Elements of art are the building blocks used by artists to create works of art. When shapes have a third dimension of depth, they become forms. When they form, circles become spheres, squares become cubes, triangles become cones or pyramids. Artists use forms when creating sculpture. Forms can be geometric or organic. Some examples of geometric forms are pyramids, cylinders, and spheres. Some examples of organic forms are shells, a banana, and flowers. Let's play a game to learn more about forms. In this game, I will show you a silhouette of an object. By looking at its shape, we will try to identify what is the form or the object. Let's try it out with this silhouette. What do you think this is? If you said football, you are correct. Look for clues around the edges of the silhouette to inform what the object might be. Are you ready? Let's start with the first form. What do you think this is? If you said pineapple, you are correct. Let's try another one. Are you ready? How about this? If you said elephant, you are correct. Let's do one more. Are you ready? What do you think this is? If you said airplane, you are correct. Well done, everybody. We've reached a bonus round. Let's try one last one. Are you ready? What do you think this is? If you said octopus, you are correct.
Nice job. We've leveled up. That means that we are going to go to the museum and look at some artwork. Our current exhibition is titled Stories of Resistance, and it is on view from March 12th to August 15th, 2021. We will take a look at an artwork from this exhibition, but let me give you a brief description. Stories of Resistance explores artistic forms of resistance from across the world. Through visual narratives, artists amplify and bring to focus the multitude of conditions that ignite and inspire people to resist. The exhibition will activate the entire museum space inside and out with video, photography, drawing, sculpture, painting, and installation. Let's take a look at one of the included artworks in this exhibition by artist Glenn Kindo. This is titled Salute and in quotations, Final Turn. It was created in 2019, so it's a fairly new work of art or a contemporary artwork. It is made out of wood, glass, fabric, urethane, lights, and gold paint. When you see this in the exhibition space, you will notice that you will see not only the reflection of the form included within the frame, but a reflection of your, of your, of your own. What forms do you recognize in this artwork? Does anything look familiar? How about this raised fist? Where have you seen this before? What does it mean when the form is repeated towards the back of the frame looking like it's going towards infinity. When we think about forms, not only are we thinking of their shape, but we're also thinking about their meaning. Think about where you've seen this before. What does it mean to you when you see people do this? If you'd like to see the work of Glen Kaino in person, you can plan our visit to our museum for visiting our website at camstl.org. And of course, anytime you visit, photography is greatly encouraged. And now let's see a special segment from our friends, Dances of India. Dances of India, now celebrating its 43rd season in St. Louis, is one of the oldest classical Indian dance companies in the United States. Artistic director Asha Prem is a 2020 St. Louis Regional Arts Commission Fellow and a 2018 St. Louis Visionary Award winner. Her daughter Nartana writes and narrates productions for their annual performances and has been dancing almost as long as she's been walking. Please visit Dances of India at Dances of India St. Louis org for more information. Hello and namaste. My name is Nartana. Can you say Nartana? It's N-A-R-T-A-N-A. -A -A. And Nartana means dance. So today we are going to dance some Indian classical dance. And we're going to learn some fantastic forms with our hands today. And as I describe them to you, you can follow me and you can actually tell a story with your hands and you're gonna learn how today. So we're gonna do that and I'm also gonna do a dance for you. First of all, what did I just say? Namaste, it's N-A-M-A-S-T-E. It means, it's a greeting in India. And the meaning of it is, I salute the divinity within you. Namaste. 
So in Indian dance, we tell stories, okay? And you're going to learn some hand movements on how to tell these stories. So let's do, let's start simple. Here's a sea, here's water. And what do you see in the water? Fish, 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 fish. Perhaps a turtle, like this, a turtle. And then if there's this lake is in the forest, how will we describe a tree? You can do the trunk like this. And then, ah, turn your hands like this. And you can even sway the hands. And it's a tree swaying in the breeze. Now, what animals will you see in a tree? How about birds? If you put your index finger on your thumb, and if you have that, you have two birds chirping happily away to each other. Now, perhaps one bird gets tired of the other bird's company and it wants to fly off. So, you can do this. You put one hand behind, one hand in front, hook the thumbs, and you have the wings of a bird, and you can run and you can fly. Uh, what else? How about a deer in a forest? You put your hands like this, middle finger on your thumb, and then the tail. The tail can be like this, and it's a deer in the forest. And deers are beautiful, they have big eyes deer in the forest. Um, how about a peacock? You can put your ring finger on your thumb like this and you can go, whoops, you know how a peacock is so beautiful when it spreads its feathers. And you have a peacock. You can also do a peacock like this. Put that, remember we talked about birds earlier? You put your index finger on your thumb and then behind your uh, palm and you have a peacock. So let's review. We have a lake. We have fish in the lake. We have um, turtle, a turtle. We have a tree like this and just imagine imagine a tree swaying in the breeze we have birds who chirp in the tree and if they want to fly away we do this and then you put your body because dance is all about the body right so then you put your body in motion and you fly away um so we did that oh here's a another animal um what do you think this is? Can you see this closely? What do you think that is? It's a dog. Isn't that cool? It's a, it's a dog. Um, so these are just some animals we can do. Oh, elephant. Let's do elephant. Put your index finger on your thumb for those big ears. And then the same on your other hand. And you have the trunk of the elephant the elephant trumpeting in the forest. This is an elephant. Um, what else do we have? Tiger. We have our hand like this. And so Indian dance, we not only use the body and the hands to make fantastic forms, we use our eyes to give meaning to what we're doing. Tiger. So tiger on the hunt. He's sly. He's vicious. And he knows exactly what he's doing. And then you, perhaps it's attacking a snake, as I'm going to show you in the dance that I'm going to do it in a minute. You put your hands together like this. Ah, you do a snake. And the head of a cobra, perhaps. A snake. It's attacking the tiger, too. It's a cobra. It's a king cobra. And, it's, and it strikes at him. So that's a cobra. Um, the elephant, cobra, oh, a monkey. And the fun thing to do about a monkey is this involves your face, too. You put your mouth like, mm, like this, or walk like a monkey. 
I don't know if you can hear, there's a bird outside. It's a beautiful day today. The bird is chirping. Okay, um, also, um, today is um, Tuesday, February 23rd, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day in St. Louis. So let's show the sun. The sun. And here's the sun. Another way of showing the sun. The rays. How about the moon? We can show the moon like this. The moon right above your head. Or like this. The beautiful half moon and the and the the rays of light at night. Um, we can show whoo, the wind. This is the wind. Fire. Let's show fire. Ooh, put your ring finger down and just pretend that you're a fire. Your whole body's a fire. If you ever seen a fire, how the flames suddenly suddenly will leap up and and keep and keep moving and keep dancing. Um, so fire. Uh, what else do we have? Rain, water, rain. These are raindrops. Um, another way of showing fire, lightning, Ooh, lightning. So in this dance, I'm going to talk to you about the beauty of the earth. And it's not just the beauty, it's the incredible magic of the earth. I'm sure you kids know about space and the planets and how many gazillion, billion, trillion planets there are you know, in the universes, right, all around us. In our solar system, there are eight planets since Pluto was demoted, but of all those planets, the Earth is the only one which is so abundant with life, with, uh, with another way of showing a deer, or it could be a cow, with flowers. Let's do that. You put your hands together like this, flower blossoming with the trees I told you about. The earth is a magical, wondrous place. There's nowhere else in the universe like this. So this dance is all about how magical the earth is. The earth and the water and the wind and um, the sun, the moon, the human body. The human body is amazing. Your mind is phenomenal and your soul, your heart, is perhaps the most mysterious, magical thing of all. So this dance, um, yeah, yeah, I think I told you everything that's in this dance, so let's start. I'll take just a second to look up. Mm -hmm.
this dance, we saw the animals in the forest, the elements of the universe, and then we saw the girl, who I forgot to tell you about, but the girl in ancient India in the villages, people would wake up early in the morning. Even in the US, if you're a farmer, you're gonna wake up early. So she was sleepy as she woke up and she got water from the lake. And she was gonna just go on her way, but then she saw the animals and she watched them in wonder. So this is how we tell a story in Indian dance. Now I'm gonna tell you a story. Let's drink a little bit of water. We're gonna use some of the movements we just learned in the story. One day, there was a beautiful princess. She loved being in her garden. She loved seeing the trees. She loved seeing um, the birds. Oh my gosh, and she loved picking the flowers. They were so fragrant. But more than anything, she loved looking up at the sun, at the marvelous, marvelous life-giving sun. In fact, she couldn't take her eyes off the sun. She told um, the birds and the plants and the flowers, you are so lucky. You get to see the sun all the time. But look at me, I have to go inside at night. But you just get to be outside all the time and see the sun as it rises in the morning as it sets at night and the, moon, and the moon rises, you're so lucky. So in all the other girls, as she grew up, all the other girls her age were all interested in handsome princes. But she wasn't. She was just mad about the sun. So when it came time for her to marry, she spoke to her father, a great king. Um, actually, sorry, this particular man was not a king. I forgot that. He was not a king. He was the architect. He built the cosmos. So she asked him, or maybe he was a king also. I think he was a king also. I had to check on that. So one day, you know, when it was time for her to marry, the, uh, her father spoke to her and said, my dear, tell me something. Do you want to marry the son? Do you want to marry, sorry, do you want to marry the son? And she said, father, how did you guess? And he said, my dear, you are my daughter. I know you. I've been watching you. So be it. Let me go talk to him. So he goes and talks to the sun, the gleaming, brilliant sun. And the sun says, yes, I will marry your, your daughter. The father goes back to the daughter. He's a little worried. He tells her, the sun said he would marry you. And she's like, father, really? I'm so happy. But he said, you have to understand one thing. In the height of summer, he gets so hot, he burns, burns, you you know, it's, you'll be sweating and burning and are you sure you want to marry him because you're going to have to deal with that. And she says, Father, I am overjoyed at marrying the son. A little heat's not going to bother me. So it happened, the, prin the princess married the son. Everything was fine for a while, but then the heat of the summer started the height of summer and the sun was unbearably hot unbearably hot and the um the, his wife she was perspiring not just perspiring she was constantly drinking water and she was exhausted you know how it is in the heat of summer when you're just so hot you drink water all the time you get tired she's so tired and she said i don't know what to do i don't want to leave my husband but i have to do something and so one day she told the son, I'm just going to go visit my parents. I'll be, I'll, I'll be back soon. So she went off to visit her parents. On the way, she stopped at a lake, a little pond. And she sat by the pond. And as she looked into the pond, you know, she, she was looking at the water. And then she saw her shadow. And to her great surprise, her shadow stepped out of the pond. And um, the, the girl, uh, she said, her name was Sajana, by the way, the, the princess. She said, who are you? And the shadow said, I am your shadow. And that gave Sajana an idea. The shadow looked just like her. And the shadow is always cooler, right? 
why not send the shadow back to the sun? And that way she can go home to her parents. So the shadow agreed, the, sh the shadow went off to the sun, and she went off to her parents. Sajana, the princess, went off to her parents. And she stayed there for a while, but as she stayed there longer, her father got a bit worried, like something's not right here. So he asked her about it, and she said, Father, you were right. I just can't bear the sun. It's too hot. I don't know what to do. I love him, but it's, he's just too hot in the summer. So the cosmic architect, he uh, took a walk, and he met the sun. And the sun, by this time, had realized that this, actually, the sun had not realized that the shadow wasn't his real wife. It was the children. The children realized, wait a minute, this shadow is not my mother. So, and the son was like, what is going on? So the father went and he spoke to the great son. That, remember, this is the son. He's, you know, brilliant. He can be blinding. He's, he's got it all. So the father wasn't sure the son would accept his proposal. But the father explained everything to him about his daughter and the problem she was having. And this was the father's solution. As the cosmic architect, may I chip off one eighth of your rays and the great son because he loved his wife so this is the love he loved his wife so he agreed to have some of his rays chipped off and that's how he and the, and the and his wife his wife this is a what, traditionally when you get married in india you wear a necklace that symbolizes that you're a married woman so we describe a married woman like this so so the great son and his wife live happily ever after. So that's the story of the son. So I hope you will remember all these um, hand movements I've taught you. The great thing about doing this virtually is that you can stop, go back, rewind. So I uh, hope you have um, enjoyed this. And I would like to end this with uh, one sentence that I hope uh, you guys never forget, guys and girls. I do it with me, okay? I am beautiful inside and out. I am beautiful inside and out. Sometimes in schools, boys ask, well, what do we do? Because, you know, you think a beautiful big associated with girls. And so, so, so we tell those boys, well, instead you can say, I am handsome inside and out. So never forget that, and I've had a great time uh, doing this with you, and practice, and hopefully next time we'll be at the Contemporary Art Museum in person, and I'll be able to teach you some footwork. I just focused on the hands today, but Indian dance has a lot of footwork too, which we'll do when, I'm, when we're at uh, the Contemporary Art Museum physically. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you to Nartana from Dances of India for that wonderful performance. Please join us again next month for Playdates, where our theme will be Daring Drawings. It will premiere on our YouTube channel on Saturday, April 10th with special guest Steph Plant. Thank you again and stay safe.